Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged white dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black gloss. I'm wearing a blue t-shirt with my logo on it. Pretty cool, right? And I'm sitting in my Tesla Model Y because in this video, I want to talk about what I feel about the Model Y a year and a half in. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. I don't like lists, but lists seem to work on the YouTube. So this is my list of things that I like about the Tesla Model Y and I'll do another video, probably link it up in the corner, but it's going to be out a week after this one. So the link might not be there yet of the things that I think could be better about the Model Y. Now this could have been a two hour video and the next one could have been a two hour video as well, but I'm going to try and actually the list bit is good because it, it makes me focus. You can see how unfocused I can be already because I'm all over the place. So let's get into it. The first thing that I really love about the Tesla Model Y after having had it for a year and a half almost is that the space. You've got tons of space in the boot. You've got those side things on the side. You've got the under boot sort of thing where you can put more things in. You've got a little under booty thing past the under boot thing. Just the space in the back is, you know, I describe it, it's TARDIS-like. Um, particularly for me, because I have a lot of gear that I have to take for me with me to work. Uh, so I, I'm a filmmaker, so I've got lighting gear, microphones, tripods, cameras, you name it. And even though I could fit stuff in a truck, and I'm really looking forward to when my son doesn't need a car seat anymore and we can put both seats down. But even with just the middle seat and the, the other seat you know, down, I can fit tons and tons of stuff. Also, you've got the flat floor at the back, you know, because there's no drive shaft. I think it's called a drive shaft. I'm sure car people will correct me in the bottom, but I think this one time I finally got it right. The thing in the middle, drive shaft, there's no drive shaft. So you've got flat floor in the back. So I can store more stuff and longer things, you know, where your feet go in the back seat. So that's a really nice feature in terms of the storage. The center console is just insane in terms of you've got tons of storage in this middle bit down here. You've then got more storage in, you know, the other middle bit down there. The glove compartment, I mean, there's stuff in there. We, we don't even think about the glove compartment. You've got the frunk, which is also, you know, you can fit basically like a small size, well, actually your average size carry-on bag in there and a couple of other things. So just the amount of storage is fan. Fantastic. So the storage is really a big thing for me. So that's number one. Then there's the oomph or the vroom, as I like to call it. I mean, it's an electric car, so it doesn't vroom. It just, you know, kind of thing. But I've never had a performance car. I mean, I'm not a car guy, so it's never really been that important to me. I've never really cared that much about it. Um, and it's funny when we when we got the car and my brother-in-law came with me and my wife to, to pick the car up. Um, and he said to me on, on, on the drive back home, he said, look, when you get your first drive, you know, when you get your first speeding fine, this is what is going to happen. He's a cop. Um, and I was like, I've never had a speeding fine in my life. I'm not going to get a speeding. He's like, with this car, you'll get a speeding fine. And um, I might do a video of whether I have or I haven't later on. Um, yeah, I'll see if I, again, it'll come out after this. So there will eventually be a link in the corner to maybe a video about that. Spoiler alert, my brother-in-law saved us, saved our marriage. That's all I'm going to say, but it'll be a cool video when I when I explain it. Um, so yeah, the I just I like the fact that, and you get this with all electric cars. So I will put that sort of proviso of this isn't exclusive to the Model Y, Model Three, what have you. This is, you know, most electric cars have got that instant torque, and so you put your foot down and they, you know, they vroom. Um, I mean, this Model Y, this is the rear wheel. This is the rear wheel model. So this is the least vroomiest of all Teslas that you can buy. And yet it's still vroomy. So it's nice just having that, you know, even when you just, if, you if you're trying to get onto, you know, turn onto, you're at a T-junction, you're trying to turn onto a road and there's like two things of traffic or whatever. And as you get more comfortable with the car, you become more confident with, okay, I've got space. I can get into the lane quickly enough. So it does... It, it's helped me be a more confident driver, but not in a, hopefully not in a douchey way. I'm not speeding all the time, but it's just, it's nice to have it when you need it. Um, so that's a really cool feature. The next one is the drive. And what I mean by this is, it's funny, this is probably going to feature in the things that could be better. So the Tesla Model Y, um, this is a 2022 model, was not in any, didn't have the suspension set up for Australian roads or anything like that. And 
people who know cars, car people, will say that it's not a very good ride and it's not comfortable because it, you feel the bumps more than you would in other cars, particularly of this price range. I don't know because I haven't driven a lot of cars in this price range. To me, it feels very comfortable, but I have heard other people say it's not. So take it or leave it. That then brings me on to one pedal driving. Now this is, you know, most electric cars have got some form of one pedal driving. If you don't know what that is, what one pedal driving is, is that the way that uh, the Teslas will slow themselves down. You do have brakes, so you still, still have a brake pedal and you can brake. Um, but the way that you slow yourself down is you just lift your foot off the accelerator and the car will then use the energy of the wheels and it'll slow the car down, but it'll put that energy back into the battery. So you could effectively drive just with a single pedal without really using the brakes. You do have to learn how to feather it and when you start taking your foot off the accelerator before you want to slow down and all that kind of stuff. But once you get used to it, oh my word, I just, I absolutely love it. I, I could not, I, well, I could if I had to, but I'd really rather never go back to driving a car that doesn't have one pedal driving. So that's just the bee's knees. The next one, and this is a big one, is the software and how everything works on Tesla. Now, this may not be for everyone. Um, you know, like the fact that everything is controlled by this center screen and when you go into the software there's a lot of sort of settings and things like that and there's a thing that i'm going to cover in the stuff i don't particularly like in that as well um, but i'm a techie guy so i really like the fact that you can go in and you can access all these controls and change all these settings and it's all you know very easy to get to through the through the um through the settings and through the window. I really like the fact that they've added the search bar so you can search for things if you're not sure where to find a particular setting or something like that. And this also brings me on to um, another part of the software is the software updates. So if, if we think of this car like a phone, which we shouldn't, but let's think of it like a phone for the moment is I'm one of those guys who I like to get a new phone every year because I have fear of missing out. You know, I've got, oh, there's a new phone. I have to have the latest and greatest new features. Now, I'm not going to sell my car and buy a new car every year because that would be economically unwise. But people have got their thing. Like my, my brother-in-law, he, he does like every couple of years, he gets a new car like I get a new phone. But the fact that you get regular software updates and those software updates add genuinely great features and, and important features, that's a really cool feature because it means that even though my car is a year and a half old, I'm getting a lot of the same features that brand new cars are getting from a software perspective. And, and you know, they're really good. Like, again, I'll link a couple of videos up in the corner of videos that I've done about some of the updates. But to give you some of the ideas, like one of the things that I really love that came out in an update, I think it was December 2022, um, the indicators auto switch off. So you're indicating once you get into the lane, the indicator will switch itself off. But it's extra clever. So if you're indicating and then you're going into a turning lane, as long as the cameras on the car see that the arrow is turning, so it knows that you've, right, you've changed lanes, but you're in a turning lane, so you probably still want to turn, it'll leave the indicator on. So it, it's smart enough to, to know that, which is cool, you know, and, and there's lots of cool new things. In fact, you can see there, this little blue dot indicates that I have a software update available. Um, oh, there's something new in Arcade. Sorry, I'm easily distracted. Uh, I don't know what's new in here, but apparently there's something new in there. Uh, but yeah, so, if, you know, for example, if I go into the software features here, you can see that I've got an, an update registered to, to, you know, I could update the car now. I'm not going to, but you can. So the software updates, I think, are a huge, very, very important um, feature of the car that I really, really like. Voice overly jumping in here to talk about how I can't believe I forgot to mention when I was in the car the Tesla app. The Tesla app is amazing as as much as like I've used other cars, apps and all that kind of stuff. The fact that you can control so much remotely from the app, you can turn the air conditioning on before you get to the car, you can turn the heating on before you get to the car, you can open the windows, close the windows, you can 
you know, view that your your cameras, your your security cameras. You can talk through the car if you've got um, the speaker installed. There's just there is so you control the charging. There's just the app is really quite brilliant. Um, so yeah, no, the app. Um, I'm pretty sure I've done a video. If I haven't done the video, I really should do a video that goes all into the Tesla app. But the Tesla app, if you haven't seen it, have a look. It's absolutely the bee's knees. The next one is autopilot. So this is the built-in, very important, the car does not drive itself. Very, very important. Um, this is the adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist, effectively, that comes with the car, you know, just built in as a standard. And not so much, on, like you can use it on surface roads, um, but I generally only use it on highways. And on highways, it is so so good like when i do long drives like i'm not a i don't like people go oh i love doing long drives that's not me i'm i'm not one of those people but i can do long drives with the autopilot the built that's built into the teslas much easier than i would have done long drives before so how it works is basically you you know you push down once on the right hand stalk that turns on your adaptive cruise control and the car will adjust its speed depending on how many cars you know this is the speed of the car in front and you can use the little dial on the right hand side to adjust your following distance all the way down to two cars and all the way up to seven cars with a following distance so very easy to control and as you go you can just flick up once and that will adjust the speed up by five or flick down once and it'll adjust it down by one or you know just dial it up one or two and it'll do increments of one or two so that's the adaptive cruise works very well um in stop start traffic i find it's quite good at slowing down so if the car in front of you is slowing down it'll slow down i find and this is getting better with each software update but it's still not quite right what i do find is that when the car starts again you're a bit it, it, it doesn't start smoothly it starts with a bit of a jerk not all the time but yeah so sorry this is this is the one that's supposed to be talking about the things that i like not things that, that could be better so yeah a little bit of give and take um the lane keep assist uh you push down twice on the right hand stalk and that'll turn on your lane keep assist over here and you'll get the two blue lines on the outside and that'll keep you in your lane and that works really well and the combination of the adaptive cruise control and the lane keep assist which tesla calls autopilot on long drives now you still have to concentrate you still have to pay attention to the cars that are around you and what's going on but the fact that you basically you you can concentrate at 80 percent instead of concentrating at 95 percent and just that little bit of being able to be a bit more relaxed makes me far less exhausted at the end of a long drive so the autopilot stuff is really really good Next thing is the charging network. You know, it's, and again, keep in mind, this is mainly for long drive. So when you're just using your electric car at home and you're just pottering around, you're driving around the city, coming home every night, you're gonna charge at home. So it really doesn't matter whether the charging network is good or not. But if you are doing long drives, like, you know, you're going away for the weekend or you're you know, driving between cities or states or what have you, Tesla's superchargers are so easy to use and the locations, some locations are good, some locations not so good, but overall they're in pretty good spots. Um, they're generally always working, they're always available. Sure, on you know long weekends or holidays there might be a bit of a queue or what have you, but the way that again this comes back to the integration how sort of you know everything just works with everything else and this is actually my next point which is the ecosystem is you know so if i said right well i want to navigate to um let's say i want to navigate to sydney uh sydney just sydney airport let's say for example so i'm in melbourne um so that's about 700 kilometers away and i go right navigate the car will automatically and this is about the integration of software all the things the car will automatically go right well these are the charging stops that we recommend this is what percentage you'll be at when you get there and it'll just work it all out for me and it makes it really really easy and even beyond that you know i can just tap on one of these charging locations and it'll show me there that right well there's five stalls there's um, six stalls, there's five available, so one person is charging there at the moment. It'll show me when the busy times are, um, and idle fees are a dollar. So it even shows, this is a, again, this came through a software update. It now also shows you photos 
of what the spot looks like. And that's actually important. And I'll give you an, an indication. So Wodonga is sort of like the Wodonga supercharger, sort of like in the back of a um, of, of a parking area behind the theater. And you sort of you go into the parking lot and you're like, where in heaven's name is it? So the fact that they've got photos here, again, this came through a software update. So it's a really nice feature. It makes it easy to go, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And they show nearby amenities. It's just the overall, you know, sort of ecosystem and everything that just sort of works together. And generally it just works. I mean, it's not perfect. Again, I'll cover that in the, in the video of things that I think could be better, but yeah, generally it just works. And so uh, this is a fairly short one for me. And, and again, like I could go on for hours, but I thought I wanted to just kind of delineate it into the things that, um, like e each one of these topics could be, you know, a video unto itself. But yeah, those are, those are the um, seven or eight things that I really like about my Tesla Model Y year and a half into ownership. And yeah. I really like it. I hope this video has been useful. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, if you found it beneficial, please like and subscribe. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for your support and we'll uh, catch you in the next one. Safe and happy driving. I hope I've got lots of B-roll to cover stuff up because I feel like, I feel like that was very, I didn't go into nearly as much detail as I normally would. So I just, I hope that was okay. Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. So let's drink some water. Ow, mother, ow. Yeah, there's, you know, there's the old joke, like how? It was almost my funny bone. Yeah, there's that old joke about the funny bone. You know, if, if it hurts so much hitting your funny bone, why don't they call them hysterical testicles or hilarious testicles? I don't know.